Hi guys, it's Cheryl. Hope you're all good. How's your new year going? Mine's is going pretty awesome so far. Welcome back to my YouTube channel with devotions and nuggets of wisdom that I love to share with you all. <laughs> I'm probably not going to manage daily devotions at the moment, but I want to be sure that whatever I'm sharing with you is led by the Holy Spirit and that it's sound gospel. But I've definitely got a whole lot of things in my heart that I'm going to be sharing on a, on a weekly basis. So you ready for it? Here we go. So I'm going to start off this year with a little series called Things That Jesus Said. Kill Things That Jesus Said. Uh, so I was chatting to a person recently, a Christian person who was brought up in a Christian home. And I don't want to dishonor this person, but for the story, this person tells me that they believed that they are not allowed to pray for themselves. They're only allowed to ever pray for other people. I was like, what? This has actually really upset me. And in the same way as I was upset last year when somebody else told me that they're in their church, they didn't believe in gifts of the spirit and gifts of the spirit were dead. And that kind of opened my eyes because I didn't, I didn't actually realize that cessationalist, cessationalism was a thing. Apparently it is. So then I also learned last year, just right before I stopped doing my daily devotions, that I got to be sure, you know, what the word of God says, because when you're online on YouTube, listen to the people preaching in different churches all around the world, you listen to, to YouTube videos, even if you're going into different churches, listen to the worship music, you know, there's a huge spectrum on what people's interpretation of the gospel is. On one hand, you've got people telling you that you're not allowed to pray for yourself. On the other hand, you've got people preaching the prosperity gospel. So what does the word of God actually say? I've actually already made a video on this um, last year. If you go through my videos, Fish on a Friday, one of the Fish on a Friday, one of the Fish on a Friday videos is called something like the difference between the golden gospel and the gold-plated gospel. But I've realized that the, the only way to know what the word of God actually is, what it says, what Jesus says, and what he has promised us, is to go to the word of God. And this is something that you don't want to get wrong. And this is a warning to you. You don't want to get the gospel wrong in your heart. Because even Jesus says in Matthew seven twenty one, not everyone who calls me Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, do we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. That scripture in Matthew seven twenty one sends shivers down my spine. I do not want to be that person that Jesus turns around and says to, I never knew you. I don't want to be that person who got it wrong because I believed with and partnered with a false gospel, something that I was taught, maybe even in church, something that I partnered with that I was listened to some teaching online and I believed that gospel. Some false doctrine that I ran with that was nothing like the heart of God. If I'm going to be really dramatic about it, Derek Prince calls it the doctrine of demons. I don't want to be the person who got it wrong. So the only way to know the word of God, to know the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth is to go to the truth. And the truth is the word and the word is the word of God, which is the Bible. And if you read your Bible over and over and over again, then you have the truth planted in your heart. And I know some of you might be like, oh, but it's really hard to read the Bible. It can be quite complicated. It's, it's difficult sometimes. Yeah, it is. But why don't you just start by reading Matthew, Mark, Luke and John? Because that's the gospel and that's where Jesus is. And if you start by reading Matthew, Mark, Luke and John and reading it over and over again, read the red bits because that's where Jesus is talking and that's where you'll learn his character and how he speaks and what he was like and what his character was like and you'll learn that he was fierce. He was fierce but loving. He didn't put up with people's nonsense or their junk and he just told them exactly what the word of God says and what God's entry requirements for heaven are. And if people wanted to accept that or not, well, that was kind of their business. I like to start Matthew 5, the Sermon on the Mount, and Jesus lays down a whole new set of regulations for, for clean living. Some of them even seem quite impossible to achieve. The only way you're going to achieve them is you're going to need Jesus. You're going to need Jesus to keep you right, to keep you on the straight and narrow. <laughs> you know, when, you when you listen to the way Jesus talks to people, he says things like, the only way to get to heaven is to follow Jesus. And that's true. And he doesn't promise us an easy journey. In fact, he says it's going to be really tough and... Not everyone's going to make it. It's going to involve a good shaking. It's going to involve leaving your junk behind. It's going to involve leaving all your dirty habits behind. It's going to involve giving up some people. It's going to involve leaving loved ones behind. You make your choice. 
But today, let's talk about what Jesus says about prayer. And we know the disciples asked Jesus, Lord, teach us how to pray. And he teaches them how to pray the Lord's Prayer. So the question I'm going to ask today is, are we allowed to pray for ourselves? Of course we are. And we know that the disciples asked Jesus, Lord, can you teach us how to pray? And Jesus responded to them in Matthew 6 by teaching them the Lord's Prayer. We know that we are to come boldly to the throne of grace. Jesus says in in, in Matthew 6 verse 8, your father knows what you need before you ask him. And then he teaches them the Lord's Prayer, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, your kingdom come. And on it goes. And then over in Matthew 7 verse 7, Jesus also says, when ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for a bread, will give him a stone? Or he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, for your evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So Jesus tells us to go to the Lord and ask. So that's my message for you today, is to go boldly to the throne of grace and just ask God for things that you need. Ask him in prayer. Ask him for, for wisdom. Ask him for healing. Ask him for basic needs. Ask him for, for wisdom in your business. Ask him for, for friendships. Ask him for refreshing. Ask him for restoration. Ask him for, for anything and just watch the Lord show up in your life. Guys, it's been really long today. Thanks for listening. I hope it's helped you. Let's pray over your day. Father God, I come before you in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for your word, and I thank you for Jesus. Father God, I lift up these people to you, and I ask you to bless them and to fill them with your word, Lord God, and have the word of God as a light into their path and a lamp into their feet every day, Lord God. Help them not to look to the left or the right or partner with any wrong doctrine, Lord God, but keep them firmly rooted and planted within your word. Lord, heal us, guide us, renew us, and refresh us with your word every day. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Guys, you have a great day. I'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.